A 75-year-old grandmother has been sentenced to two years in prison by a federal judge for her role in a 2020 sit-in at an abortion clinic. Now, the D.C. judge and uh, graduate of the Catholic University of America, also in Washington, D.C., perhaps ironically, uh, Colleen Culler Cotelli, that's the judge, sentenced Paulette Harlow, despite the pleas of Harlow's husband, John, who said that his wife was having trouble staying alive and that he would take her place in prison if he could. Now, the husband, uh, after the sentencing, Collar Cotelli, uh, stated that she hoped Harlow would get a load of this now, make an effort to remain alive, because that is, the judge said, a tenant of Harlow's religion. Now, that struck me as obscene, as contemptuous of uh, the woman's faith, a pro-life activist who didn't hurt anyone. I mean, this worst thing that could have happened during this protest is maybe a life could have been saved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what an offensive comment coming from this judge. I, I pray to God that when President Trump becomes president, first of all, that he pardons Paulette Harlow and then impeaches this judge, especially after those outrageous comments, for crying out loud if Joe Biden, um, you know, they, they, it was Robert Hur in the report basically saying he's an elderly man, we're not going to move forward prosecution. Here you have an elderly woman with health issues. This woman should have never been sentenced for peacefully protesting um, outside an abortion clinic. Obviously, they set yeah. different priorities for the Palestinian demonstrators that destroy right. properties across the nation. You know, this past weekend was the four-year anniversary of three days of riots at the White House, uh, the setting the Church of the Presidents on fire, in, injuring 160 to 180 police officers, forcing the evacuation of the president and the first family from the White House. And nobody was sentenced to a day in jail for that. Yeah, well, th there were many people who were sentenced throughout 2020 for actions in a lot of different cities. But I will say <laughs> the discretion uh, of the judge, particularly for someone who is elderly and ill, I think that the, the judge certainly should have looked at that and used that as a factor in sentencing. Um, you still cannot block people's access to health care if they are going to any kind of clinic. That is federal law. Um, I think she was probably sentenced mm -hmm. incorrectly, but the judge and the judge certainly should have taken some of her health issues into account. Well, but you can't do that. And the derision with which the judge dismissed the concerns of the husband that his 75-year-old uh, wife, a grandmother, might die in prison for being pro-life and doing nothing violent but trying to save lives, and the contempt for the, that the judge demonstrated for human life was extraordinary. It's really sick in many ways. And just for the record, abortion is not health care. Right. But I do want to read a comment from uh, my colleague, Elizabeth Troutman, at The Daily Signal. She was able to talk with Paulette, and Paulette told her, I felt like it was a tremendous privilege to stand in the court on behalf of the unborn who have no voice, who have no voice. So this is who Paulette is. She's a woman who has chosen to use, in her old age, to use the time that she has to say, I'm going to be a voice for those who have no voice. And it's a sad day. We were talking earlier about the weaponization of the government, and this is just a continuation of that atmosphere of weaponization that we're seeing across America. Just another example in the double standard, and this the same judge sentenced another woman at the same protest to nearly five years in prison recently. Well, Ronald Reagan said that everyone who's pro-choice, he's noticed, has already been born. But I think the reality is that, unfortunately, if she had been wearing a Free Palestine shirt while doing this, there would have been absolutely no consequence whatsoever. They probably would have thrown a ticker tape parade in her honor. These people, these pro-Hamas demonstrators, have have been storming the Capitol on a regular basis, illegally occupying government offices, obstructing the proceedings of Congress. They get arrested and they get, uh, what's it called, they just like walk out of prison through a revolving door. No charges are ever really seriously prosecuted by these people. Mm -hmm. So if that had been what she was doing instead, or if she had been, you know, blocking this health care uh, clinic or abortion clinic to free Gaza, she could have done anything she wanted and no one ever would have prosecuted her. Our country is becoming more and more difficult to recognize as the United States of America.